Let's go on up. Let's see. Okay. It's got the chat from last time. Oh, people are already talking. Yeah, that was my bad. Okay, uh, I'm going to just put some stuff. I am not really a big freaking holiday person. There's only two holidays that I really care about. It's Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I'm not even really that crazy about Christmas. Thanksgiving is my holiday. And the rest of them, I mean, they have their purpose, but I'm just not feeling them. <laughs> Tony's back. Mama first. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. All right, it's 3 o'clock, and uh, we will start with the schedule. Everyone's like, hey, 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 you're doing these things. I don't like you moving them around. It makes me crazy. So, carved in stone. Monday, 3 p.m. is a lock. Wednesday, 3 p.m. is a lock. I will not be changing them anymore. I will put this in the chat room. It says this is where all of the cool kids play. Monday and Wednesday. That looked like a wreck. 3 p.m. I will post. Uh, Fridays are possible. But the thing with Fridays, and I've seen it over the years, that a lot of people freaking bug out. I don't know what it is. It's just, uh, you know where I get these shirts? Old Navy. You can get some. Of the, they're seasonal because uh, there will be some more. But, yeah, uh, I get this stuff because I'm a Toys R Us kid. But Monday and Wednesday are locks. And there's something else that's coming, and I need to post that up. Because I looked at it, and, like, 11 o'clock is cool. But going back, doing the data, 3, 3 p.m. seems to work for most people. Does it work for everyone? No, it doesn't work for everyone. There are people like, boo, hiss, put it back at 11, put it at 12. But... A part of this is I'm, I'm catering to that hustler, entrepreneur person who has the freedom to show up. And that's one of the things that we're going to be doing for it because someone had posted in uh, Hustle University, which is free, you only pay if you want the ebook, audio book club. So let me go find that for people because it's a great way for you to stay in the know. What's going on? What's happening? And uh, we would definitely, definitely, definitely let this roll. So let's talk about building your own economy. It's something that I learned about. I got a freaking pinch nerve. It is driving me crazy. But I learned about building your own economy in the strangest of places. When we had that. Right <laughs> before Judge Judy. <laughs> Judge Judy. I must admit, at times I like to watch Judge Judy because you know she's going to make people look stupid. And uh, it's it's just a train wreck that's building and it just wrecks. But with building your company, it came from the warehouse sales. Which, you know, for you, those of you that don't know, I used to be in the storage auction business a long time ago. Long, long, long time ago. You get so much stuff that has a certain level of value that you just can't really sell everywhere fast because, you know, I'll give you an example. Microwaves. Towels, sheets, you know, linens. Uh, there's so many things that you could sell for between 5 and 20 bucks that you will consistently get out of storage auctions. So I just start, you know, and it was a battle with my partner. I was like, I don't believe this, but that first weekend that Luke came in, it was like, okay, we're going to do this. Uh, our business model was this. We sold whatever we could online, eBay, Amazon, and then the rest we blew out because we had another problem 
that couldn't be solved by just selling the stuff at the price. But well, stuff coming in so fast that we were operating on a high turn thing. It's like this stuff's got to go, and the only way they really get it to move was to put, you know, maybe a microwave that someone else could sell for fifteen, twenty bucks to put in the dollar section. Only the super nice, clean microwave. It, it, that's the stuff that we held. And if you've ever bought a storage unit, you know, a lot of stuff's crappy. I remember there was complete units that I bought. Everything just went to the dollar section. It was just like there's no point in even arguing about this. But what happened was strange. I noticed uh, there was, it started with the immigrants. It started with the immigrants. We had a large contingent of Haitians. And, you know, just to let you know why, we were in a place called Stone Mound Tucker area. And there's this place called Clarkston, which has we of the world. I mean, they have people from all over the world. So we have Haitians, Brazilians, um, and we were real close to Norcross, which had a huge Hispanic population. And I noticed something that was really, really, really interesting when we started this whole process. That people would leave and go get friends and come back and head straight to the dollar section. They wouldn't look at nothing else. And they, you know, they make jokes like, ah, is that bedroom set coming over to, you know, just keeping hope alive, stuff like that. But yes, Daryl, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, you know, people would look at that and they would just come back. And I just noticed, I would sit there because I would sit at the desk, and the desk was the checkout area, and I would just have a little sheet of paper, not just like, you know, simple one person, draw lines, you know, get to Five. And I just noticed, and I was just like, all right. everybody's going to the dollar section. And the thing is, they wouldn't just buy one thing. They would buy five to 30 things or five to 100 things. And over a period of months, something really remarkable happened with the dollar section. It became like the chat room with the cool kids. There were certain people that would come in, and they would go there. And it's like, hey, how you doing? I mean, folks develop friends, friendships in the dollar section. So... As this thing went on, and I mean, we met until the day we shut down, that dollar section was on. It was on because another thing that happened, the dollar section created a loyal brand of citizen. I don't, we had people every weekend, don't care if there was ice on the ground. We didn't have heat and air conditioning in the warehouse. I remember this one poor girl busted her ass on some ice, and I was like, oh shit, I hope she ain't hurt. And she got up like a dude. I'm all right. <laughs> I was like, good, yeah, you keep that, you keep that, you keep that, you keep that. And it just went on and went on. So for those of you who are, are thinking that building community is this super large, complicated process, it's not. It's getting started, having some gathering area, whether it's online or off, and just continue to build. I call it storefront preaching. You know, if you've ever seen those places where you go by there's like the preacher and six people on folding chairs. Then, you know, a year later you go by and there's 500 people. And then six years later, it's the ever living tabernacle waters, the storefront preaching somewhere. I mean, it takes time. It really does. <laughs> I, I wrote something like that in the forum that uh, exposure without uh, engagement is pretty worthless. It's pretty worthless. That's funny, David. But now, how can you build your own economy and your own your own group of people? <clears throat> you gotta have. What do you have to offer? That, that's the first thing. What do you have to offer? And also, do you have a plan? Because for the storage business, we have one plan, and because we were working that plan, a byproduct was the community of the dollar section, which there's stories that I've yet to tell about what went down over the dollar section because. It was the dollar section, you know, like one of those videos, the people of Walmart, the people of the dollar section. I mean, there was a guy that came in with a mohawk. Uh, no, incidentally, the gay guys didn't really mess around with the dollar section. They really did. It was uh, pretty interesting how that went down. Okay. I finally figured out the hand thing. Like when you raise your hand, what the hell is that? Some people have some uh, really interesting avatars, but okay. The hand is not raised anymore. All right, well, I'll go back to the chat room where the cool people are. But how do you build? You know, you, you got to have something to offer. It has to, you, you have to have something that 
a large cross section of people is going to what? That's the first thing. So as my uh, uncle would say, you got to have some bait, and the, the bait has to be tasty. So what is bait? I mean, you know, I helped out one person, a uh, consultant client. He created some bait, and he spent some, I think, I don't know if he did the donuts. I don't know if he did the cookies, but he spent maybe 30 bucks, and that turned into like a $5,000 deal for him. Plus, there's more money on the table. Because I think we've all been spoiled to a degree by marketing in this day and age because it's a lot of manipulation that goes on with marketing. You know, we actually think that we're in charge of the stuff when we're really not. But if you really think about it, how many things have you bought that you have in your house right now that if you had sat down and thought about it, you wouldn't have bought it? There, there's something else that happened that made you think, oh, this is good. Um, it, it's really, really strange because when you start studying marketing, you start studying psychology because the two are very closely related. They're like this. They're like, oh, my kissing cousin. You, you learn some stuff, and it, it kind of scares you when you're honest because you're thinking, wait a minute. Uh, I thought that I did that on my own volition. What do you mean you tell me I was manipulated? And it, it happens. But with your bait, your gathering area, you got to have a why. And why are you doing it? Because uh, what we talked about yesterday in your YouTube channel, why are you starting your channel? Why are you doing this stuff? Why do you have this engagement? Why do you want people to come? You know, And if it's money, that's going to be a short-term motivation. Now, you know, how many people here saw Breaking Bad from the beginning to the end? What the heck? What are you talking about, Tony? I wouldn't have get what <laughs> what are y'all doing? Oh wait a minute. I don't know. I'm distracted. Because I'm seeing crazy stuff in the chat room. But how many people saw Breaking Bad from the beginning to the end? You know, from the first I mean, it was like sixty four episodes, I believe. And I kinda OD'd on them. Yeah, definitely Jedi Matrix. But if you remember in the last uh episode when she when you know she's just like, you know, like, why did you do this? And he was getting it. She's like, if you just say you did it for the family, and he finally told the truth. He's like, I did it because I liked it. And that was the whole thing, because you know, this has been my argument with drug dealers and other people. After you get to a certain level, it's not about the money. It can't be. Money's just how you keep score. It's not about the money. And when, you know, um uh, White Walter White got to that level. He became powerful and well-known and appreciated for his talents, something that didn't happen because he made a poor choice about selling his position in his company that later on became a billion-dollar brand. But essentially, you got to like this stuff. You, you have to have fun. You, 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 you can't be – because one of the things I get is like, how can I make money? And when I start saying, well, you have to have a product, you have to have a service, you have, people are like, no. Dude, Glenn, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Just tell me how do I get point A, I'm broke. Point B, I got some money. Point C, I have a lot of money. Point D, I'm bald. Give me that. I don't want anything else. I don't want the middle game. I don't want to hear anything about talking to people. And the thing is, that process of getting money that way is so obscene that most people won't go with it. I'll tell you something that happened. I was going to uh, a party. And it was, I had to go through the hood to get to that side of town. And for, unfortunately, I did not fill up on Petro. So I'm getting gas, and it's about 6.30. It's December. And I hear this guy, what you need? And I'm like, what the hell? Why are people yelling, right? Then, you know, I'm going to get the gas, and it gets like, what you need? Yo, and I'm at the gas pump, and there's this guy in front of the store. And he clearly wants something. But I'm already like high alert, just like, what does this dude want? I don't know this dude. And he's just still going on. And he starts walking towards me. And I was like, and I figured it out. He's got some kind of hustle where he wants my cash. And he's going to use whatever he has to get gas, which could be a stolen credit card or something. And I was like, I have no cash on me. I'm using a credit card. I 
And he goes, he, he walks back, and it's cold, and he's standing in front of this convenience store waiting for someone to come so he can activate his hustle. But the way that he is doing this is so obscene, it's so scary, unless he meets another hustler who's like, yo, uh, you got that stolen credit card? Well, okay, what about 50 cents on the dollar? Because they're going to start negotiating. He's not going to get dollar for dollar. He's waiting for that right person. And when you're selling like that, it's rough. It is rough. Rough, rough, rough. Let's see. Here's Chuck. Most people can say that Glendon, the marketing and sales people in the USA, designed it to be that way. I would agree. Bye, bye, bye. Spin, spin, spin. Because after all, it would make you happy, strong, smart, successful, and the dog will run up and like you. And you know, you you bring a real good point, Chuck. Have you noticed how many commercials make men look like idiots? I'm not talking about making a mistake. I am talking about simpletons, idiots. Now, can anyone answer why that's the case? I've talked about it before. It, it is a very compelling reason they do it. And they do it because women like it. Women make, uh, they're appealing to the superior, perceived superior mindset of women by making men look like idiots. But the problem with that is it's everywhere. And a lot of men, because they want sex, and they're like, well, you know, if I tell the truth, she's not going to have sex with me. So they just go along with it. And I think it's stupid. But that is part of marketing. That is part of marketing, and it is very, very powerful. <laughs> yeah, Tony's got a typing issue. Uh, China has its own set of issues right now. I, I agree that China became wealthier because they did what we used to do, became a producer for the world. <laughs> Jokes on China, we're in default. Yeah, marketing and women. Now, What's going to happen with this marketing? Because I don't know if any of you know it. There, there's all kind of men's groups out there. They're, they're just like every day they just wake up and they just like chew glass and then you know stick themselves with pins and go out in the world very angry. And it's going to create a lot of problems because I don't know what the backlash is going to be. Because if no one's noticed, I make my product for men. And, you know, I said that in the group, and I was like, wow, you know, why men? You know, make something for women. I was like, primarily my products were made for men because I'm a dude. And, you know, I can't save the world, but I can save a few. And I know that as a man, every dude needs the ability to be able to generate income, to feel good about himself. Nobody's happy with themselves broke, more so than a guy. A girl... I'm broke. She's not happy, but dudes become depressed if they're not if they're broke. It is real broke. I mean, it's messed up. What's going on? Uh, George, buy things you can't afford with money you don't have to please people. <laughs> I saw that in a movie. And it, for some people, that's the truth. That's the truth. Uh, China keeps propping up. See, China's got another problem. Let me let me explain to you how this thing's going. China owns a lot of T-bills and owns a lot of debt. But if we go into default, they're screwed. So it's kind of like I, I don't like the guy, but what he said was true. It was like someone was asking Donald Trump a question, and he says, if I owe you $100 and I can't pay, I have a problem. But if I owe you $100 million and I can't pay, we have a problem. So the deal with the United States and China is we all have a problem with this. And unless we can find some way out of it, they're screwed too. So it, it's really, really interesting. Damn. <laughs> I shall invent a shoe. Women's shoes. <laughs> oh. oh man. <clears throat> oh man, that, that is uh that that is that's funny as hell. That is that is funny. The 
Man, I'm surprised it hasn't been done because it's so silly that it actually has a lot of potential. A lot of potential. Which brings me to another part about creating your own economy. Anybody remember the freaking Pet Rock? Uh, and when I was a kid, the stuff was on television. You can own a Pet Rock. That shit sold. For those of you who are not old enough to remember the Pet Rock, <laughs> I'm going to give you the link because I know this is going to be in uh, Wikipedia. And just look at this. I want you to think about this because typically there are people out there, uh, so I'm sending to everybody, it's in the chat room. Go check out the Pet Rock. Now, well, this was a completely marketing move. 100% marketing on this. 100% marketing. You take a rock, you name it, you give it a fancy, you give it fancy packaging, and it's sold by the millions. I never looked up the number, but I'm quite sure it's here. Uh, the fad lasted about six months, and then do, 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 do. the guy who did this sold 1.5 million pet rocks and became a millionaire. A 32-page official training manual titled The Care and Training of Your Pet Rock was included. I never had a pet rock because I grew up in Alabama with plenty of rocks. And I mean, if you don't know anything about Alabama, Birmingham, uh, the reason that the steel industry was there because it was the per perfect marriage of natural resources and location. The iron ore was there and the coal was there. So you need the coal to stoke the furnaces to process the iron ore. So a lot of stuff happened there. But yeah, the Chia Pet. Uh, Chuck, GC, some people say we, we need to default in order to build up or redo the dollar. What do you think? I see the exchange rates going less and less in our favor. The buyer power is less and less. The middle class is going away. I agree with everything. With uh, we're gonna the default of the dollar. If it happens, it's gonna be out of it's gonna be out of control of the hands who are controlling this. Because if the dollar defaults, that's a war move. War. Now understand, <clears throat> war can be very profitable. <laughs> it can be very profitable. The World War Two is the reason we came out of the second, you know, the Great Depression. That was a big reason. Um, I look at that, and that's a good question. Let's talk about, you know, the economy deal. <clears throat> when we were, <clears throat> excuse me, when we were shutting down, just before we were shutting down, because a lot of people talk about the Great uh, the Recession. Ha it started in 2006, and I know it started in 2006 because I had a lot of people coming in, people that I never saw before. Uh, they were white, middle class coming in with college rings, spoke a certain way, but they're, they're, you know, as Chuck said, the middle class is going away. They got punched really, really hard, and they had to change their lifestyles. I started seeing those folks in 2006, and there was more of them in 2007, and there was way more of them in 2008, which means that people in certain you know, industries were being impacted first, but the middle class is being hollowed out. Because we don't have the pathways that we used to out of, you know, lower middle class, from being poor lower middle class up to middle class, upper middle class. We don't have those pathways, which was traditionally manufacturing. The big smokescreen, in my opinion, you know, because I know it's a touchy subject when I bring this up, is, you know, if you get a degree, that's going to be the uh, equalizer. <laughs> Psych. Um, to me, and I think to you, because you're here, the surest path out of where you are to where you want to be is your own enterprise. That is the surest path. I mean, I, I believe that. I mean, that's that's how I live. That's how I live. I believe that because we are in the age of disruption and all of those things that were such sure things as teaching, nursing, being a police officer, all those people in those professions have been laid off and more will be laid off going forward. <clears throat> The pet monster. I don't. I, that was past. That was before. After my time. Uh, people are making money on that idea. That's why that we have purpose out there waiting for war. Some say a civil war will come in the future again in the U.S. Weird times for sure. If there is a civil war, it's going to be a class war. 
It's not going to be a race war. It's going to be a class war because we have a group of people that have not been taught that they can fashion their life, and they have a very, very big entitlement men mindset. And it's going to be those people who don't have shit who are going to be going after the people with shit. Like you see all these dystopian novels where the people with shit are in the city with a wall and they've got guns. I see something like that happening. It's about class, position, your worth to society. I see that happening. Race war ain't happening. People are too lazy. Like, uh, no, no, no. People are going to fight about food, resources, health care. They're going to survive. They're going to fight about survival things. But yeah, I agree. People are making a lot of money on this because the preppers, that's a huge community. It's a huge community. But the thing with the prepper community and making money, if you're not a true prepper, you're not going to be able to really infiltrate that group because these guys are serious. Now, there's about four of them that I watch, and they're very, very serious. You are not going to be able to infiltrate their community and be fake. It's not going to happen because they're going to know this. They, they'll talk about you and they will ignore you. <laughs> People steal <laughs> the pit rock. Now, China is definitely manipulating their currency. They've been doing that for a long time. Ah, yeah, I know about Farrah Gray. That's a very interesting story because uh, he's done a lot. <laughs> I'm not messing with you, Greg. I am gonna leave that alone. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone because uh, I know of the guy, and I've heard some of the things he says, and uh, some of the things I don't believe in. But there's a lot more to that puzzle. I, I mean, I agree. I agree. Uh, he's done a lot. But this really goes back to environment. You take a kid, all right? Like, you know, let's talk about Tiger Woods. A lot of folks don't know that Tiger has brothers and sisters. You never hear about that because his father was married before. And, you know, if you read about it, you know, dad was a shitty dad. And he said, if you ever had a kid again, he was going to invest his all in the next kid. And booyah, we have Tiger Woods. Because he got all, he got the best of Earl. But they also got Earl when Earl was making more money and Earl had calmed down. Because, you know, Earl, Earl was no joke back in the day. Earl was no joke. So, essentially, you know, people go about environment and building an economy. And I, I really thought about this because, you know, I'm the product of a single parent home. But I had my grandfather, Amos McDaniel, who I spent a lot of time with, who was a builder. He was a builder. And I had neighbors who worked in the steel mill who would come home. Uh, there was this guy named Ernest Giles. He would fashion, he would take these barrels from work. And he was a welder. Take the barrels from work, cut them open, and make barbecue grills. And he did this for years. And he just put them in front of his house, put a price on it. And he was selling these for years. So I saw people be productive. I saw men working. So I got that thing from a lot of different sources that a lot of kids in single parent households now, they're not getting because they don't have that, you know, those kind of communities anymore for the most part. They exist, but they're not as widespread as they used to be, as I would say. It's definitely in China's interest to keep money cheap. Definitely. I think, um, you know, talking about building your own economy in the American dream. There are many people that feel that the American dream is over, and it's really about classification. It's not really the American dream. It's the American expectation, the American entitlement. You're going to do well. You're going to go to college. You're going to buy a house, and you're going to be happy. The problem with that is there's a lot of assumptions based on entitlement and obligation versus engagement and activity. The American dream is what you make it. But it was pretty much the American expectation, and when people were not able to get that expectation, that's when we started having a lot of problems because a lot of people are not capable of fifth grade math. I mean, seriously. 
but you know, on, on the deal with building your economy, it's something you can do. You can do it now because I know a lot of folks know this, but a lot of juice is still offline. There's so much money out here that's ridiculous. I mean, what you can you can leverage online and get people to meet up in a location. And we're going to talk about numbers in a minute because, like I said, one of the things I do like about webinars on there and this chat room effect is a lot of really cool stuff is going on here because uh, people are rolling now. Uh, I would say, I actually said that in the video, what Chuck is talking about with ammo. I said, you know, forget gold and silver, buy guns and bullets. Do you know that certain levels of ammunition around are hard to come by? And if it's hard to come by, people pay more money. Um, everyone does it, not, you know, going back to my childhood, for, you know, it was part of popular mechanics, you know, reloading is when you create your own bullets, you create your own ammunition, you put the powder into the case and you seat the bullet. That was something that was common when I was a kid. People don't do stuff like that. <laughs> a couple of people have hinted to me that in a few years, Chinese will want American mail order prize. You know what's funny about China and, um, and um, yeah, China? You know they have this uh, discrimination against, uh, let's see, was it? Let me let me get the thought straight. That boys were preferred more so than girls, and they also had birth rate regulations. Well, there are more men than there are girls in China. I know the women are like what? I saw this shit in action. I saw. And I'll give you. I'll explain it to you in a minute. But essentially, law of supply and demand. There are more men than girls. So girls are pretty much, this is what, there was an article, I think, in you know, American National Geographic. I remember seeing the article. Chinese women were telling dudes, you don't have house, you have no car, we get not married. And, I mean, dudes were, like, being depressed because to get a girl, not the best girl, a girl, because the, the supply and demand issue was so stark that they had to do so much to get a woman. They had to have a house. They had to have a career. The stress level was very high for men who were not economically upward mobile because they could not get married. They couldn't get a girlfriend. I mean, and it, it is not about even gold digging. It's about market. It's like if you want me as a Chinese woman, you need to be a Chinese man about something, and it's created a lot of problems. So I actually, you know, David's like, play, I mean, it can happen. Because the dudes over there are lonely. It's a big issue. Uh, actually, you know what? What I'm going to do, I'm going to give this. This is another thing I like about this. Because, you know, we get to talk about world events and everything. Chinese men lacking <laughs> pride. I'm Googling this because I don't know. Here it is. Uh, 2010 study shows China faces 24 million bride shortage by 2020. China, I mean, uh, China's growing problem. Too many single men, Forbes. See, I'm telling you, that my nerve powers, are that they will help you. You know, I'm going to bring stuff to you that no one else will bring you. And I'm going to share this with you because, see, this is how I make my business decisions. Going back to what Chuck said about the mail order prize, that's not a joke. Whoever can go and solve the loneliness problem of Chinese men is going to get paid. So I'm going to send you this. I like that. Thanks for recommending that. Let's see. Things is rolling. Tell me, how does a merchant in China send me a 99 cent item to the East Coast? Because they have a warehouse in, uh, <laughs> in Los Angeles. That's how. There's some. There's something else going on with that because I've gotten stuff. Prison labor. Uh, displacement is the natural order of things right now. 
you know, either you are displacing folks or you will be displaced. There's no, really no way around it. Sure. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, investments because, like you know, just say I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy, right? I know a guy, and I know this guy was he was in storage auction long before I was, and he's never sold any of his gold. And he he was getting. I mean, he may be sitting on a million dollars worth of gold. Now he's sitting on gold that no one knows he has, I don't know where it is, and he can turn that into cash in hours, minutes or hours, depending on how fast he can get to some place. So when you think of currency, like when I was talking about, you know, emotional currency, spiritual currency, your soul currency, you know, there's a lot of different ways for you to have money. Let's see. <laughs> but you know, okay. Recurrent events. If you don't have a clue to what you can do, what kind of service you can create, recurrent events. Like, I mean, seriously, that thing with the mail order prize, that may not be a joke. I know there are dudes here in America who are Russian, uh, Filipino. That's very big business. They're matching up these guys with these women. I have two friends. Who said they would never marry an American woman? I know one was in Russia last year. He says he wasn't looking for a bride, but I actually think that's exactly what he was doing. Well, Kevin Channel will start making more women. No, no. See, this is a part of tribalism and culture. It's a problem, right? We all know it, and they know it's a problem. But their philosophy on men and women is so deeply ingrained, even with the fact that they don't have enough women for these men, there's still it's going to take a few generations for that to change. This is not going to be an overnight thing. It, it will take gen. Okay, what if I've been talking about the degree myth, right? I know four people who know me. I've talked to it. They recently signed up for school. And then one of them said yesterday that I don't know if there's going to be a job for me, and I just signed up for school. Fortunately, she got scholarships. And she's just like, I don't know what I was thinking. It is such a culturally strong thing to do, even when it makes no sense, people still do it. Because the it's culturally sanctioned. Tri all right, test it. Go out and talk to people and like, yeah, man, I got, I got a business, right? And then switch it up and say, you know, but I just started going to school and watch their eyes pop when you say you're going to school. You, oh, you got a business? Yeah, I'm going to hope. Good luck to you. Oh, I'm going to school. Really? What are you studying? It's culturally sanctioned, and that's a very strong psychological trigger. Let's see. I like this. Many of us are blue collar or less even. To invest in chance losing it all keeps many of us from dreaming. We place in a mindset that's not always progressive. Now, I'm going to address that. This is the beauty of living in this time right now. You don't have to have money to make your business pop. You do not have to have money. You have to have the ideal, the drive, and the push. Because Kickstarter, if you have a good ideal, people will fund it. You can instead of going to the bank, you can go to your potential customers and say, hey, I've got Chinese, uh, i got American brides for Chinese men. Uh, I've talked to Ping Lee over here, and they're all like nodding, and you do a slick video. People will fund that. I'm not kidding you. They will, they will fund it. They will give you money because it's solving the problem. You Do not ever put it in your head that I can't start the business because I don't have any money. Canal Dream Publishing started with 285 bucks. I did not do a reinvestment in that business for like, shit, uh, 18, 19 months. You don't need money. You need the ideal. You don't need money if you have that. Ideals and execution are the best currency to have.
damn, build it and they would come. Southern Bells, <laughs> rats, exotic Midwesterners, college. <laughs> I love this chat room. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Japan for six months. I can tell you some stuff, but I'm not trying to uh, incriminate myself. Um, I think exotic Midwesterners is going to go over in college girls, definitely. And American Indians, that's going to run. Y'all are having way too much fun with this. Uh, Justin, there needs to be a better bridge with education and business that changes the social outlook. I agree. I, I really do. This is funny. But essentially, if you want to build your own economy, you want to build your G-verse or whatever you want, it just starts with one person, and that's you. Then you add another person. Now, let's talk about the big problem with building your own economy. Uh, the YouTube channel is August 6th. It'll be five years old. When you start saying two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, ten years, people, their eyes start glazing over, and they're like, oh, that's too long. And, you know, to use one of my neighbors growing up, Miss Sally Mae Jones, if you live old enough, long enough, you're going to be old. The time is going to come. Are you preparing for it? What does Milton Freeman say about the minimum wage? I think it's a bad idea because it's going to cause a lot of problems. Uh, that's funny. Uh, she's actually working on the business. Her family put so much pressure on her that I, I mean it was it was it was she capitulated. I would agree. Uh, anyone that's really looking to start a business and you're broke, spend the eight dollars, six bucks, whatever it is on Amazon Kindle, and go ahead and get the hundred dollar startup. Because even if there's not a business in there that you can do, it can motivate you and inspire you to come up with something. I'm not touching the female thing. Kevin, stop, stop. Just stop it, dude. Just stop it. I will tell you that this was another article that I read years ago that people were going to these major B schools, MBA schools, not to graduate, but to make connections with people because it was such a problem that people were getting in. They weren't going to class. They were just networking. They were just networking. That was that was their whole purpose for getting there. They one one Asian lady. She said, oh, "I don't care if I graduate." She said, "I've made a hundred really strong contacts. That's why I came. I think it was worth the money. That's why she was there." So it's funny. Uh, let's see, Chuck. Sorry, GC. I look forward to your videos, books, and webinars, etc. I have ideas, so do my peers or fellow attendees. I get charged up on this. Putting it to practice is much harder than to talk about and dream. That's one of the things that I have a... That's the reason I, I, I'm going to announce it probably in the email. But I'm going to redo 30 days to 2,500 because it was so successful. It addresses what you're talking about because if you're taking a course that every day you have to do something, it creates a habit of being active because I wasn't always like this. I mean, once in my life, I was a bum. I wasn't this productive. I look at what I can do in a week compared to when I was in the boarding house. I can do in a week now what it may have taken me three to five months to do when I was there because of that mindset. I was a procrastinator. I would put shit off. I wouldn't do stuff, talk myself out of it. And now, you know, maybe I'll share this with you. Uh, the, the methodology that I developed was whenever I have an ideal, I execute on it. I just go. I don't care if, it's, if it fails, fine. I just go I'm, because it is so easy to get into stasis where you're just paralyzed and you do nothing. I just, you know, just keep pushing, keep pushing uh, because, you know, when I did that video, Technical Difficulties, a friend of mine said there was an eclipse and, like, everybody was catching hell for two weeks. I was like, I didn't know. I was just looking at my shit. But in that period of Technical Difficulties, I got personal records in the gym. I came up with some really, what I believe to be some snazzy business ideals. Even when shit's falling apart, you, you have to keep pushing. And, you know, to what you were talking about, you have to break that dream down into a bowl of cereal. You know, 
you can't eat the whole box of cereal, right? But you can eat a bowl and just pour some in, work on that. When that's done and gone, pour some more in there. It's just got to get started. Kevin, yeah, it does keep kids from learning skills. Uh, Louie, I have so much respect for any YouTuber that constantly makes videos. I love making videos. I want to make a video a day, but I can't manage it. Yes, you can. You need energy and enthusiasm. Let me give you a tip, the trick to making a bunch of videos. Oh, the chat room's moving fast. This is what you do. You pick a topic, right? And uh, you turn off the television. You take your phone. You turn your phone over so you can't see the notifications. You turn the ringer down. You shut everything down. You go in a room with a sheet of paper and you write down what you want to talk about and you force yourself to come up with 50 to 100 topics. Then you write out you know, what you're going to talk about. And then the next step is you make that first video that day and upload it. And you just, just watch rent. Because the thing is, if you make a video every day, if you make a video every other, no, if you make a, two videos a week, that's 100 videos a year. That's a shitload of videos. And that's not one a day, so. And Tony's like, Louie, I believe you can. <clears throat> uh, Joe, I dropped out of high school and went to college a decade later. I don't regret dropping out at all. I learned more from failures in my mentors in college. I regret not starting the business after I dropped out. Although I wouldn't have been mature enough. Uh, Donica. Donica, has anyone ever tried to do the 30 days discipline method? You can do some for 30 days whether you want to or not. After 30 days, uh, it becomes it becomes more of second nature and only takes two and one day one days to build a habit. Yeah, I, I really agree. And this is at some point you've just got to force yourself to do shit. It's just not going to come. It's not you, you just. Yesterday, I went to the gym. I did not want to go. Did not want to go. Was feeling like, ugh. And actually, it was a very great workout because, see, your mind sometimes will lead you to believe you can't do certain things when your body is more than ready because, I mean, the dude next to me on the squat rack was like, he was laughing at well, first because I went in and I racked up at 315. Then when he saw that I went rock bottom and then I went to 405, he was like, you don't have to do a lot more than other people to get recognition. I learned that in the gym. But essentially, learn how to force yourself to get started because once you get that thing going, it's easier. You know, great example. Anyone ever save any money? You know, the first part, the first few weeks or first few months, it's hard. But have, if you notice that once you get a nice chunk in there, then you start throwing money at it. It becomes a game because you want to see it grow. But you have to put that first dollar in there. That's the same thing with building the habits. you got to do some stuff. Uh, Kevin, should I make seven videos on Sunday? I want to show you a channel of a guy who does. He makes all his videos for the month in one day. Or he used to. And he would change shirts and stuff. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Yep. I got a YouTube channel. Uh, he is blown up to... This guy has done in about 18 months. He's gained about 120,000 subscribers. And he did exactly... He's a good guy. I'm actually a friend of his on Facebook. He's a real nice guy. Just... Um, I'll send the channel to you. If you are pressed for time, right, you can make all your videos for the week in one day. Or if you're going to do a video a week, you can make four or five in one day. Just change your shirt. Or I know one guy, he would do it. He wouldn't even change his shirt. He'd just load them all up. He was going crazy with it. Kevin, is five minutes some kind of video threshold? When I first started, I was told to make keep my videos between three and five minutes. And then, because if you notice, you see a lot of people are between that three to five minute mark because of something. But then YouTube put out a study, and guess what the optimal time of videos that people watched the longest? It was nine minutes. 
<laughs> but once again, the information hasn't filled it out because it's like people are still going on old information. But it's been proven by YouTube that videos of nine minutes in length actually have a longer view period. And you know, I have a, I have probably some of the longest videos of any YouTuber out there consistently. Because I mean, I've got videos twenty minutes. I've got videos damn near an hour. And some of those videos have a watch through rate of fifty percent, which means fifty percent of the people that find the video are watching it from beginning to end, which is really high. It's really high. I mean, it shocks me sometimes. So don't get caught up in the five minute thing. If you want to talk twenty minutes, talk twenty minutes. You want to talk thirty minutes, talk thirty minutes. Because if you try to do what everyone else is doing, you're going to get the same results. And also with YouTube. You can't look at the front and go, wow, this guy's doing five minute videos. You don't know who he's connected with because this was something that used to be really, really popular. Uh, people would become friends with a really popular YouTube video and he would like hit a checkbox. So when people subscribed to his channel, they had the option to subscribe to all these other channels. So all ties were lifted from one person. Yeah, Dominica's schedules or so. I mean, seriously. Uh, Burnout issues, Jeopardy episodes. I don't know what you're talking about. Tony, I've been waiting for my muse. She ain't been showing up, so I'm struggling to do it anyway. Okay, this is my whole thing on the views. I get this. I am the angry writer. I'm the guy that everyone talks about in my writing group. I said this, and you know, people didn't take it. I said, well, I'm the kind of guy that puts my spear up, and I go hunt down the fucking muse and stab her in the neck and bring that shit back home. <laughs> you got to go get it, man. You can't wait. You, you you have to learn how to self motivate and self inspire. Attention span: first several minutes and last several minutes. Nothing is like what kind of muse you need. I think she's hey, you know, someone could be selling muse. But essentially, you can build your own economy one person at a time. You, you just have to wrap your head around that it may not happen as fast as you would like. I am not even close to where I want to be. Uh, let's see. G, would the threshold for how-to videos be lower if people are too lazy to actually do them upsell to some product or service to do it for them? Interesting thing with uh, how-to videos, if a person has a burning need they have to solve, they watch those videos. That's why how-to videos probably have some of the highest view counts other next to fuckery videos. I agree with that. Um, my podcast moves so fast and what and why wacky seems to work on YouTube. <clears throat> we have extremely probably of any generation some of the, lo the lowest attention spans in time. But you can work on that. You can increase your attention span if you want to. But yeah, if you're catering to people with low attention spans, you gotta do something to keep them engaged. <laughs> I like this. Change your screensaver to get off your ass, tell me. Alright, that's cool. So uh, oh, you know what? I have completely ignored the Q&A session. And, oh, there is someone over there. Okay, this is talking about China. If uh, one child, one child, if one lives in a city, and two of you live in the country, i.e. farmers, if you have more children and, and report it, the couple can face jail time and the kids can be taken away. Yeah, that's pretty strong motivation not to have any more kids. Yeah, you, 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 what? You and Ping Lee? Really? Why is her belly so, you know what? Security? I'm telling you, China's no joke. Hmm. All right, uh, so we're at 3.54. I am going to wrap this guy up, and uh, we'll be here Wednesday. And I may do some surprise hangouts this week. I have not decided. So if you're on the mail list, you will know about it when I would do it. I will go ahead and schedule Wednesday session and send that out. But Wednesday's 3 p.m. I haven't set it up yet, but I will. 
and there may be a surprise thing. Also, I'm going to redo the YouTube deal that I did yesterday, so if you didn't sign up, I'm not going to do the offer thing. I'm just going to put a link down there for YouTube because uh, I'm in the process of changing up a lot of stuff. But <clears throat> we will we will be on point for the rest of the week, Wednesday, 3 p.m., and da, 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 where is it? Also, this Friday, Crafting a Life of Design and Intent will drop. I just need to grab these links real quick. So this is the YouTube one for anyone that wants in. And we'll go back. <clears throat> and just to let you know, there will be uh, webinars with the crafting of uh, a life of design and intent. Definitely going to, and that's going to be real fun. You think I'm wild on YouTube. Wait till those webinars drop. That's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be pretty wild. It's pretty, pretty freaking wild. Cool, cool, cool. All right, it's 356. If anyone has a question, shoot it real quick because you got me for a few more minutes. If not, I am going to roll out. And uh, this one is going to be on the main YouTube channel. And uh, it's funny, sometimes these things process really quickly, and other times, not so quick. And I will see if this chat is going to actually show up with the video. Because this is not a regular Google Hangout. This is webinars on air. It's, it's a little different. It's a little different. Because I get to do a few cool things. Oh, actually, that's still in there from last time. So anyone that wants to uh, do the YouTube thing. Because this, all right, um, while I'm speaking of that, this is how I'm doing the new training. I am going to redo 30 days to 2,500. That's going to roll pretty hard once I get that rolling. But the newer stuff is going to be one or two webinars a week with your assignments, and then we're going to talk about stuff. And we may have like a private chat room in the middle of the week, something like that. But, you know, everyone has their business, their family. And for all everyone that went through 30 days to 2,500 and went, was there every day and did all that stuff, you're fucking awesome. Because there's, there's people who are there every day and they did everything. And it is doable, but if you don't have that kind of freedom, it can be a challenge. It can just be really, really a challenge. So I understand that. But when I roll that, if you're on the mailing list, you will know, and I will drop it for you. Uh, what is your Kindle book? I'm going to start talking about my publishing process on my author channel. Um, let me go ahead and send you that link. Because currently, I don't really have Jack on. I have a lot of older stuff on Kindle. And the reason is, let me just say this. Amazon is cool. Amazon's awesome. Amazon's wonderful. However, <laughs> it doesn't work with my business model the way that I want. So I'm going to talk about writing on uh, Glendon Cameron Author. I just sent that link. Uh, at some point, I'm just... Uh, after going through the craziness of the last few weeks and all this other stuff, I just decided to take time and make some better decisions and reformat what I'm doing. And, you know, just do certain things like with um, these webinars. Okay, I'll say it again. Monday, 3 p.m., Wednesday, 3 p.m. There may be a bonus session, but you have to be on the mailing list to know about the bonus stuff. But this stuff will be here 3 p.m., and if you're on the list, I will send out everything, and you can sign up, and we'll talk about it, and we'll have fun. So this is going to go on. What's coming in this space? At some point, I will have uh, other people with me. Uh, there are some other folks who try to bow guard in here, and we hadn't discussed anything, and it was just going to be a general chat session, which could be cool. But I'm looking for certain people to get in here for you. And I've reached out to some people, and I'm still waiting to see how that's going to work. So there's a lot of cool stuff that's coming. All right, it is 3.59. I'm about to bounce. I see no questions. I want to say thanks to everyone that came out, and uh, I will see you on the good side.